On a regular day in Colombia, a bunch of workers heads to Belco, a place that helps South American companies hire Americans. This morning, things are different. Instead of the usual security guard, there are armed soldiers at the gate. They're checking everyone's IDs and inspecting trucks before letting anyone in. Boss Barry sees some workers being sent home, but when he asks why, the soldier doesn't answer. Inside, it's business as usual, but only foreigners are allowed to stay while Colombians are sent packing. It's Danny's first day, and Vince, an executive, shows her the ropes. He also makes sure Danny has a tracker implanted in her head. It's because kidnapping is a big problem here, and the tracker helps keep everyone safe. Meanwhile, Marty sneaks off to the bathroom to smoke. Leandra puts up with unwanted attention from Dukes, who stares at her while she works. She tells him to stop, but he won't listen. Thankfully, her boyfriend Mike works here too, and they steal moments together during work. Today, they almost get caught, so Mike heads back to his office. Looking out the window, he sees a soldier going into a hangar nearby. Curious Mike calls even the security guard at reception, but Uni doesn't know what's up with the soldiers. Suddenly, an unknown voice comes over the intercom, announcing that unless they follow orders, most of the 80 employees in the building will be dead in eight hours. The first task, kill two people within the next 30 minutes or face serious consequences. Confused and thinking it's a prank, employees leave their desks to figure out what's happening. As a woman tries to leave, security measures kick in, sealing off windows and exits with metal plates. Internet and phone signals go dead and the air conditioning stops. Vince checks the control room, but it's empty. Rushing to the lobby for answers, Evan's clueless, and there's no way to call for help. Panic sets in, feeling trapped. Mike asks maintenance men Bud and Lonnie to use a blowtorch to breach the metal plates. Barry tries to calm everyone, explaining the plates are a security measure for government buildings. It seems like a hacker's prank, so they should wait to avoid accidents. Some head to the roof for air and find Marty and his friends smoking to calm nerves. Since the building is isolated, there's no one around to ask for help. Bud and Lonnie try melting the metal plates, but they don't budge. Mike worries it's serious, especially since soldiers took over security in the morning, but Barry dismisses it. On the rooftop, they spot a guard near the hangar, but he ignores them. Marty thinks it's just a test to see how they handle pressure. Suddenly, an employee collapses and dies, followed by three more in the lobby. It looks like gunshot wounds, but there are no bullets. Panic erupts as people flee. Barry investigates and finds their heads exploded due to implanted trackers. Mike tries to remove his tracker, but the voice warns him to stop or it'll detonate. He barely stops in time and gets stitches. Leandra heads to the kitchen for ice, followed by Dukes, who keeps harassing her. In another room, employees find hidden cameras everywhere. Barry asks Evan for the keys to the armory where the guards store their guns, but even refuses, fearing it'll escalate things. Barry insists it's just a precaution, but even quits. Meanwhile, Bud gives Lonnie a wrench, and they head to the basement to check on the power. The voice speaks again, warning them not to touch the cameras or remove the trackers or face immediate consequences. With 76 employees left, the voice demands they murder 30 people in two hours or else 60 will die as punishment. Panic erupts in the lobby as people argue over what to do. Some grab knives from the kitchen. Marty triggers the fire alarm, hoping to alert the fire department, but it's a closed system. Evan tries to find a way to turn it off in the basement. Lonnie breaks down when he hears the alarm, and in his panic, he attacks Bud with a wrench, accidentally killing him. Seeing Danny witness the scene, Lonnie tries to attack her, but Mike intervenes, leading to Lonnie accidentally hitting his head and dying. Upstairs, Barry uses his authority to calm everyone and suggests discussing their options. Opinions are split, some support Mike, arguing against killing, while others side with Barry, seeing it as their only option. Langer suggests hanging banners on the roof to attract passing cars for help. Barry, Dukes, Terry, and others opt for an alternate plan. Meanwhile, Mike, Lindra, and Evan gather supplies for the banners when they hear a strange noise. They discover Barry's group attempting to access the armory using a blowtorch. The trio tries to reason with Barry's group, but they refuse to listen. Even pulls out his gun to threaten them, prompting Mike to calm him down to avoid violence. However, Evan uses the gun to destroy the blowtorch tank. Afterward, they join the others upstairs to work on the banners. When they're ready, they head to the roof to hang them, but the soldiers shoot at them, injuring one employee. Mike wants to try again, but the voice warns against it, threatening to detonate trackers. The group has to drag Mike away, giving up on the banners and returning inside. As they head downstairs, Mike wonders if the government is involved. The job's always been odd, with no one paying much attention to their work, and the building's isolated location seems suspiciously fitting. Suddenly, Barry's group ambushes them, pushing Mike down the stairs and demanding the armory keys. Even tosses the keys away and Dukes reacts by fairly stabbing him. Leandra condemns Dukes' violence, 
but he nearly attacks her too, halted only by Barry's intervention. Barry's group retrieves the keys and arms themselves from the armory, reserving the weapons for themselves. Barry and his men round up everyone in the building at gunpoint, bringing them to the lobby. Despite some resistance, they manage to corral everyone, even finding someone hiding in the basement who stays silent. Mike wakes up to find Evan's body and Dukes forces him to join the others. In the lobby, tensions run high with Barry using gunshots to maintain control. He rejects bribes and personal pleas for mercy, implementing his own rules. He prioritizes those with children under 18 and employees over 60. But as the numbers don't add up, he begins choosing victims randomly, targeting Mike out of spite. Anyone who resists is shot on the spot. To drown out the screams, Barry orders the radio turned on as he executes his chosen victims. However, the chaos catches the attention of someone, prompting them to shut down the power, plunging the building into darkness. Panic ensues, with Barry and his men shooting indiscriminately, causing more casualties. Some employees flee to the basement, where Danny teams up with Roberto, hoping to escape through the elevator shaft. Amidst the chaos, the voice announces the death toll, demanding one more victim within two minutes to avoid further casualties. Lager finds refuge in an empty office, using a paper guillotine blade for defense. She ambushes Terry, disarming him, but ultimately decides to spare his life after his pleas for mercy. At that moment, the voice announces the failure to complete the task, resulting in 31 deaths. Ninja's mercy towards Terry proves futile, as he dies instantly, followed by 30 more employees across the building. With the death count reached, the voice unveils the final stage of the game. In one hour, the person who has killed the most will be spared. The voice reveals the current tally. Barry with 11 kills, Dukes with 7, and Vince and Danny with one each. Barry's group intensifies their hunt to increase their count. A secretary tries to bargain for her life, but Barry kills her regardless. Entering the elevator where Danny and Roberto hide, Danny jumps off the roof in panic, leaving Roberto crushed as the elevator stalls. Meanwhile, Linger seizes Terry's gun and joins Marty and his friend downstairs. They collect the trackers from the deceased victims, planning to use them to blow up the wall. Linger uses the intercom to inform Mike, urging him to join her on the first floor. Mike quickly takes the stairs, encountering a cafeteria lady whom he brings along. Meanwhile, in the cafeteria, Marty, Lindra, and their friend find Dukes brutally attacking another employee. Lindra shoots Dukes, but he retaliates, killing Marty and his friend. Lindra subdues Dukes with a table and then repeatedly strikes him with an axe. In the elevator, Barry tries to force the door open as Danny navigates the shafts to return. Lindra rejoins Mike in the lobby, revealing the explosives they obtained. Vince arrives, throwing a Molotov cocktail and killing the cafeteria lady. Mike and Linger flee, encountering Barry and Vince, who open fire on them. Vince pursues with more bombs, but Barry kills him instead, allowing Mike and Linger to hide. Despite Linger being shot, Mike vows to save her. Linger professes her love for Mike before succumbing to her wounds. Enraged and grieving, Mike confronts Barry, initiating a brutal fight. Ultimately, Mike prevails, killing Barry with a tape dispenser. Mike is overcome with emotion, regretting the violence he resorted to. Suddenly, the voice announces that the windows and doors are open, and two soldiers arrive to escort Mike to a neighboring hangar. There he meets the man behind the voice and his partners who reveal themselves as part of an international organization led by brilliant minds. They created their company to study human behavior without traditional constraints, but they refuse to disclose the true purpose of their experiment. They begin questioning Mike about his experiences, but he remains silent. Mike notices a panel with everyone's names and switches used to activate the trackers. Realizing his opportunity, Mike recalls placing explosives from Marty's collection inside a soldier's clothing. He rushes to the panel and activates all the switches except his own, causing the soldiers to perish. Armed with their weapons, Mike turns on the so-called scientists, exacting revenge for the torment they inflicted. With the ordeal seemingly over, Mike leaves the building. However, he discovers a series of screens showing recordings of previous games and learns that a new phase, Stage 2, is about to begin. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.